Well, you know, we were thinking that um, the last couple of nights we've whipped up a couple of really great meals here at home. So we thought that tonight, rather than kind of a sit down entree, that we would um, try to experiment with, you know, four or five, you know, several um, different uh, taste choices. So we're coming up with a lot of small plates here. Um, we're going to have the dish that I talked about, the shrimp meatballs. And we're also going to have a little dish, uh, scallops and black beans, which uh, comes from the Gulf Coast, from um, a little restaurant called Lulu's, which is in Point Clear, Alabama. Jimmy, Jimmy Buffett's sister, Lulu, came up with this recipe. Uh, Rachel's going to whip up uh, some shrimp lettuce cups with shrimp, mangoes, and maybe some pine nuts in there, uh, cucumber, onions. Berkeley's going to uh, um, serve up a fantastic Greek salad, which I caught a glimpse of, which looks amazing. Uh, what am I leaving out? Oh, chicken wings. We've got some chicken wings. We're going to have this wonderful eggplant dish, which is eggplant. We're going to slice it really thin, and then we're going to um, lightly fry the eggplant, the thin slices of eggplant, and then we're going to roll that up with some mozzarella and Parmesan cheese and some more herbs and spices. And then we're going to kind of smother it in mozzarella sauce and bake that in the oven for a while. And uh, those are really tasty. So I think we have enough. So uh, you're all invited. So <laughs> Let's just set the stage here because I'm looking around your beautiful home here um, in Palm Desert and there are pumpkins and skeletons and creepy yeah. things that, um, because it's Halloween's upon us here. and. Uh, Looks like you guys are getting ready to have a party. We are getting ready for a Halloween party, but our house looks like this year round anyway. Skeletons, pumpkins, no. Um, Is that true, Rachel? No. No. Uh, but, but Rachel definitely gets into uh, decorating for, for Halloween. Um, and you like to entertain. You like yeah. to have people mm -hmm. over. We do. As you're chopping and preparing our dinner tonight, it looks like you have a baseball game on. Tell me about baseball. Well, one thing you may notice Right here in the middle of this kitchen, which, by the way, the kitchen, of course, is my favorite room in the house. Um, the island in the middle of our kitchen is in the shape of a large home plate. It looks just like uh, the home plate in baseball. So being a baseball fan and sports fan in general and uh, loving to uh, cook with a game on in the background is always fun. Uh, that appealed to me, of course, the home plate aspect. And here we are sitting around the home plate, literally. Yeah. In your kitchen. Um, so tell me about how you relate to food. I guess um, more specifically, how you value food. Uh, food, it's on, it, you know, I love it on so many levels. And it's been something that has also kind of evolved for me over my life the importance of food and the importance of cooking. Um, you know, I, um, I come from South Georgia, which is where I grew up. So, some of my favorite times to remember as a child was on, my dad worked six days a week, but Sundays was his day off. So Sunday was always fun for us because that would be the day that dad would cook. So it was more of an event, you know, so we'd all pile into the car and drive 35 miles from my little hometown down to Tallahassee, Florida, which uh, Tallahassee had much bigger markets, better markets and more, more selection. So. The whole family would get in the car, we'd drive to Tallahassee, we'd shop for the dinner for that night, and then uh, it would usually be maybe something a little bit more exotic than we would have, you know, during the week. And, um, and then we'd do that, and I'd come home, and my dad would cook. I guess it, I associate that with, a, with the, the happiest time for the family. Describe a typical Sunday meal. My dad liked two things, basically. Cooking outside, around the barbecue pit, or making a big pot of something, like kind of a big one-dish pot, like gumbos or a stew. And he loved to grill steaks outside. When I first started cooking, uh, those were usually the things that I would kind of gravitate to right away, either cooking around the grill or making a big pot of something on the stove. Gumbo's still my favorite thing to make. If gumbo's your favorite dish to make, what would you say is your secret ingredient. Some of the things that I use that are a little bit atypical as far as seasoning and gumbo is I like to use clove and allspice and whole nutmegs. So I think those particular uh, spices and seasoning give it a little more of a holiday flavor. 
Do you find that cooking is something that grounds you? How would you describe that, that role that cooking plays in your life? <clears throat> well, very much so. It's, uh, it's not only grounding, but it's almost, in a way, it's like, it's like zen-like for me, in a way to come home and cook. And it's my therapy, kind of, you know, where it's like, all right, now we've, been on, we've been in airports every day, hotel rooms, rental cars, you know, stage, planes, and, and then to come home and just kind of have the familiar surroundings of the kitchen and be able to plan the meal, cook the meal, you know, have dinner, have some good wine, that whole process is very thera therapeutic for me yeah. uh, after being on the road. And you know, and also just the quality of the food is so much better <laughs> when you can do your own shopping and cook at home because sometimes I'm kind of at the mercy of whatever I have to eat on the run and it's not always the healthiest or the best stuff for you when you're on the road. So if you were to have advice for this young generation coming up about food and cooking, what would that be? Have fun with it. You know, cooking uh, is something that I'm sure you're aware of that is so much fun to share with your mates and get in the kitchen together and make it a big part of your life. Uh, there's nothing that breaks the ice, I think, quite like being in the kitchen and cooking. You know, friends come over, especially maybe people you don't know very well, you know, casual acquaintances and you're having them over for a party. Nothing breaks the ice like hanging out in the kitchen. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of, of music and the role music has played in your life. Is there any similarity between singing and cooking? Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's all in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, in, you know, in making records, in particular in the studio, you know, you can make or break a good, a good song with how it's mixed, you know. The performances might be there, but if you get a bad mix, you don't have the magic or you don't hear the performance the way it should be heard. And I think, you know, cooking's like that too. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, a dash here or there can kind of change the whole texture or composure of something. It's, it's all an artistic process, I think. Music, cooking is just as artistic as making music.